What's going on guys, welcome back to Season 6 of NHL 23 Saskatoon Caribou Expansion Mode Series. As always guys, if you wouldn't mind dropping a thumbs up on this video and subscribing if you haven't, I would really appreciate it. Now, if you guys missed the last episode, definitely go and check that one out. Some crazy trades were made. As you can see, for instance, we now have Kaprizov on the team. We actually got him with Matthew Boldy from the Wild in exchange for Dylan Larkin. Also made a trade with the Wild for Jonas Brodeen. We made another trade for Aaron Eckblad. I thought our team was absolutely stacked this year. And then we wanted to lose the Minnesota Wild in the first round in seven. I can't believe that. We, like, we got three of their best players from them, only sent back Dylan Larkin. Of course, he scored the Game 7 Series winner against us. It's like the game just had to troll me. It doesn't make any sense. Like, we were so, so stacked. We didn't win the President's Trophy. You can see the Maple Leafs did that for the fourth straight year, but I'm pretty sure we won the Western Conference. And honestly, last season was our year to win it because we have to pay a couple of guys huge contracts now, and I don't really know where we're going to get the money. Matthew Boldy, for instance, making five and a half. He wants a raise to nine million, so we got to find three and a half somewhere. Kamel was on his entry level. He wants six and a half, so... Looking about nine half million we have to spend, not to mention some other guys. Colangelo wants to raise, Isaac Howard. Like, we definitely have a tough task ahead of us in terms of the cap situation. So, we'll get to the draft. Maybe we'll be able to trade some guys for picks, for prospects. We can kind of rework this team a little bit. You know, definitely think the majority of this team is good. I'm just going to bank last year on just being super unlucky. Definitely don't want to, like, you know, tear away the team again since we already did that essentially last season. Now, I'll take a look here, guys, at the draft class. See what the top is looking like. All right, so you got five standard medium elites. Two of the guys there are gems. Rest of the gems here, let's see. 69, low top four. 46, guaranteed medium top six. Really nothing crazy. I mean, I guess this winger here could be medium elite. Is also a gem. Guaranteed potentials now. Looking for medium elites. Unfortunately, we do not have one this year, though. Okay, guys, this is kind of random, but how do you say this name? Ives Gervé Schoenard? That is one of the craziest names I've ever seen. This time I'm going to steal here. Nicholas Zetterberg. I love his name. It's kind of like a mixture between Nicholas Lidstrom and Henrik Zetterberg. He's Swedish as well. Guaranteed low elite. Going to go like seventh round, I think. NHL ETA there. Guaranteed three years. Like, he's going to be an absolute steal. All right, guys. So I'm looking at our defense here. And I feel like Jonas Bourdain's probably expendable. Uh, obviously, a very, very good defensive defenseman. 95D awareness there. Also a good skater. Thing is, he's 33 years old, so he probably will start to drop in rating soon. I'd rather move him before that happens. Also, too, he's only got one year left after the draft. It shows two, but it's really one, so he'll probably want to raise. If we can get a top five pick, I'm looking to get the Flyers fourth overall here. I think it's definitely worth it. Trades rejected. Uh, they say sweeten the value just a touch. I think they did. I always click A, like, way too fast. We have three-fourths. I'll throw one in here. And there we go. Okay, so the reason I wanted the fourth overall is because I actually want to get a defenseman who I think can replace Pro Dean. So we'll sim to our pick. You got Cotton in there, 81, medium elite. D. Pietro 82, Bouchard 83, all right, we'll see how good our guy is. you got Walker Crawford here, a winger. Uh, Joe Thorne, similar style, and also NHL ready. Now, shutdown zone ability there for a winger. I feel like I don't really need that. If I want a forward, I probably want more of a scorer. Where I'm looking at this Lettinen defenseman. Uh, weakness is none. Also NHL ready, similar style there, Mark Edward Vlasic. So, like Brodeen, should be a like solid defensive defenseman. I'm going to take him here. And 79 medium elite. All right, was the other player better? Let's see. Um, oh my gosh, there's still a medium lead here at six. Buffalo, what are you doing? Do we try and make a move maybe? Now look at Colangelo here, guys. Originally I was going to trade him, but honestly, he's got pretty good defensive stats. Amazing physical. Maybe he could be a Sorelli replacement. Sorelli there is making 6.2 for the next five years. Obviously, a very good two-way player. Doesn't really put up too many points though. 54 there. Um, 6.2 million. We can't move Shen. I feel like if we can move Sorelli here, potentially for the sixth overall pick with the Coyotes... This could be worth it for us. Again, trying to get rid of Cap to keep Boldy as well as Kamel. Trades rejected. With Sorelli, I could throw in Lysel. 24 years old, still only 80 overall. Really good contract. 900k for the next eight years. Bit of value probably because he has some X factors. Played well in the AHL, but doesn't really fit the fourth line. He's more of a scorer, and we kind of just have too many players. So Sorelli and Lysel for a sixth overall. Coyotes say yes. Okay, so we're going to take that Joe Thornton dude who is a winger. But similar style to Joe Thornton. Maybe he actually has decent face-offs. A lot of time the creative guys do. He's only 78 overall. What's going on with their logo there? It's just not showing for some reason. But um, yeah, shut down there. I mean, he's literally the new Sorelli. Look at that. He's got 78 face-offs. He can easily play center. Um, yeah, just a really good two-way forward. All right, so there we go. Replaced Sorelli there with Crawford. Replaced Brodeen with Lettinen. Saved a bunch of money. I don't know if these guys will make the team this year, but uh, definitely next year I see them in the NHL. And our next pick now, guys, that's until the fourth round. So... Uh, we'll see what we can get. Definitely want Zetterberg. 244. Cannot forget about him. Uh, we could take a chance on somebody like Kuliakovo. Probably medium top six. Not guaranteed, although he's such a low rating. We could actually just trade back. All right, guys. Next time off in Red Wings, a fourth round pick for their fifth and a seventh. 
They say no to that. Interesting. Give them our seventh as well. So we move up like 20 spots there in the seventh round. Now they say yes. So honestly, it's kind of hard to drop back there. Almost really not worth it. Like we barely really gained anything. I still have a fourth round pick too. So um, I guess I'll just take Coley Activo early. Could also take Renberg here, who could be medium elite. Let's take a chance on him. 58 overall, medium top nine grinder. Again, our logo's not showing up for some reason. Uh, he could end up being like a really good fourth line forward. Now, my next pick here, guys, is 148. So I'm thinking we'll take Coley Activo here, definitely. Please be medium top six. Medium top nine, come on. I mean, I'll have another pick in the fifth round. I'm honestly thinking a Jang. Take a chance on a medium elite guy. And 58, medium bottom six. Next one here, 160. And all the guys who want Slur in the 200s. All right, guys, so next year I'm off with the Coyotes. A fifth round pick and a fringe starter goalie for two sevenths. Just to try and get those guys we have pinned. They say no. I feel like the fifth alone honestly should have done it. I think that's a pretty fair offer. I was trying to trade back the Coyotes, guys. They wouldn't even give us two sevenths for a fifth. So at that point, it just honestly makes more sense to make our picks rather than moving back. I'll take uh, Win Handle here, however you say his name. Medium bottom six, that's tough. I'm trying to offer the Coyotes here a seventh rounder next year for their seventh this year. They say yes, okay, so she will land the last couple guys we have pinned. First year we'll take Zetterberg again, guaranteed low elite. 63 overall as well. That is such a good seventh round pick, and look at the shot on him. I think he could actually turn out to be a pretty awesome player. Our next pick, guys, is actually just two picks later. Uh, we're gonna take that guy who could be low top six, really good chance. He's a low top nine, okay, Doyle Grinder there. Never know, maybe he'll turn out to be a fourth line forward. All right, guys, we're at the resign phase here, and after trading away Brodeen and Sorelli, we got 18.5 million in cap space, which I'm hoping's enough to keep Boldy and Kamel. Obviously, first things first, we qualify both, make sure we don't lose them for nothing. Boldy here wants $8 million for three years. Now, we need him for five more years. He's only 26. Price goes up slightly. Um, I feel like I'd like to just keep Boldy. If he'll say yes, $8 million for five years, I'm fine with that. Kamel here was a little bit cheaper. Yeah, 6.2 for five, which is actually perfect. Let's try, let's see if he'll stay loyal to us. 575 five for five years. At that point, we actually still have a little bit of money to spend. Like I said, Colangelo will probably be the new second line center. Four million bucks for three years, that's tough. Really would have liked if he actually signed the two year deal he said he would, but instead the game gave him the qualifying offer. I hate when it does that. Uh, did mention it to EA, I don't really know if that's gonna get fixed or not. But anyways, um, let's see, does he get super cheap at all like in a long term? No, he doesn't. Okay, we'll do a three year, because it's pretty much the same price as a one and a two. Let's see if he'd say yes to a three and a half. I think that's, you know, really good, obviously, for an 85. Um, Howard here gonna qualify. What's Howard want as well? I just realized one year, 3.2. Okay, I mean, again, we're gonna have to try and do two years here, three million. I'm not even sure if we can actually keep all these guys for those prices. Um, probably should have actually made sure to get Colangelo signed first, since obviously the RFAs are not at risk of losing. Now, look at the guys, the awesome thing about this team right now is our two goalies combined make less than $2 million. And even if we lost one somehow, we have Comesso here, 84, also on entry level in the AHL. Uh, Papineau there actually, UFA, so we'll sign him, start potential. Colangelo rejects, wants to test free agency. Boldy rejects as of now, Howard rejected. The goalie said yes, Kamel also said yes. Okay, so Kamel was the only one willing to give us a bit of a deal there, which is nice to see. Colangelo, like I said, the only UFA, so we gotta get him signed and we can kind of worry about the rest. Uh, I guess we'll try four million bucks for three years. Cost in here, wants two and a half. We just cannot afford it right now. Uh, Mayfield, we also just don't need. We got Sal there, 800k. Anderson, Atard, I mean, they're done growing unless they, I mean, 800k can completely bury that. Atard, 1.2 million. So I'll let him go. Anderson, 800k, either HL number one or maybe even NHL bottom pair if kind of everything goes wrong. Um, Lorenz here, 800k. That's a really good deal. I'll give him a three year. Now, this defenseman here, Lettinen, who he just signed. Signed out overall. Rolls minor top two. Okay, so he'll probably be in the AHL. I'm not going to sign him quite yet because I think it might affect actually our cap situation. Crawford, other forwards. I'll probably send him back to junior for one year. Bolshnikov, 2378. I'm just going to qualify. And Liam Kirk here, I know you guys want me to keep, but he's done growing now. So I'm probably going to let him go. We can only have like one dude who's no longer growing. I feel like we already got that in Tyronning. Steve's 2071 medium lead. Definitely have to give him a contract. And there we go, guys. Colangelo did say yes. Uh, same with a bunch of like AHL players there. So let's see. We have 10.7 million in cap space. That's enough to get Boldy under contract. And then Howard, I think due to his rating, uh, if we play hardball with him, can probably make it work in the fall. Like I'm signed for 3 million. Plus in the fall, you can send guys down and you can create a couple extra million in cap space. So. Let's get Boldy signed. He wants eight for three. Honestly, I'm fine with the three years if he'll do like, say, 7.5. And he does. Okay, so that's actually a really good 
Still have four million bucks. I think we can actually get Howard signed here. This is actually working out really well. We can, okay. Uh, five years, 4.2, four years, four. Let's see if it says yes to like five years and four million. He doesn't, okay. That's clear how long I stick with the team. So we'll have to give him, I mean, he wants a one year, which I just think is not the way to do this. At least give us a two year. Let's see, two years, just over three mil. He's still saying no. Ah, uh, I really want to at least get like an extra year out of him. Let's give him what he wants there for two, see what he says. In terms of unsigned guys, like I said, Lettinen uh, should be in the AHL. I think we can actually pretty safely sign him at this point. And then everyone else will probably leave unsigned. All right, there we go. Howard did say yes to the two year, 3.25. Lennon said yes as well. So we don't have a lot of cap space left. Will he even show me? 1.7 million. Um, luckily, I'd say we're pretty much good. Obviously, goaltending, we are stacked. Defensively here, we still have an insane top four, 89 overall plus, and then we have two 80s right now in the bottom pair. Like, that's more than fine, obviously. The top four are playing the majority of your minutes. I think this kind of makes more sense than having a super balanced approach. And then in terms of forwards, we're actually still fine. Like, Braden Shen here is our ninth best forward. Uh, fourth line, like, maybe we could bring somebody in. We got Rizika as the fourth line center. I feel like one of these 79s, though, can probably make the jump. Okay, we've actually got five 79 overalls here. So, yeah, at least one of them should be able to make the jump to the fourth line. Still, though, there's, like, a cheap, you know, NHL fourth liner in free agency. We could definitely sign them. But I'll take a look here. You got Holtz, Michkov, Fantilli, O'Reilly, Kucherov, all available in free agency right now. Pretty crazy. Highest rate there is, though, Michkov and Fantilli. So, number two and three in the 2023 draft class. They're both asking for more than we got Bedard signed for. It's a pretty crazy. Uh, Brendan Brisson there, again, is a free agent. He's actually a UFA now, so... Yeah, I think the trade we made with him was amazing. Uh, obviously, cannot afford any of these guys, unfortunately. March so, though, under 5 million for 86 is great value. Goaltending wise, you got Andre there in 90. Anuin, 86, wants 1.2. What the heck? I think I have to sign this guy just out of principle. Like, what? If we get him signed, we could actually have like an insane backup. Trade the current backup we have for some value, whether it be you know, picks and prospects. Nico Dodds here in 2683, wanting 1 1.2. Like, that's a pretty good ask, but obviously. Nowhere near as good as Anuin. I'll take a look at two-way goalies as well, just in case there's like a medium elite. It does not look like it. A lot of high fringe starters, but they're all in their late 20s already. In terms of skaters here, Olison, 2480. He's an RFA though, so I assume Columbus will keep him. Chase Stillman, 2478 sniper. He's actually got a good shot on him. I don't mind signing him at all, whether it be for the AHL or NHL team. Try three years, 850K. And I assume they both say no, guys. I'm offering Olison here as well as Kuznetinov. Three year, $1 million, two way deals. I really don't see the NHL team not matching, but I feel like, you know, you miss 100% of the shots, you don't shake. We, we gotta try it. Oh my god, I just saw Cody Glass, 82 overall, wants a two way deal. He would be great on the fourth line. Let's get him signed. Million bucks for one year. I mean, it's a two way though. Let's try two years, see what he says. Jeff Skinner, he's a sniper though, really not a fourth line forward. Uh, Leno, 2380, he's an RFA. This Hancock guy though, 2064, medium top four potential. He's a free agent, so we'll give him an offer. Also, this guy here, Luvera, 2069, low top six, power forward. He could actually turn into a player, so I'll give him like the max two-way offer there. And then Leno, even though he's an RFA, will do the same thing. I'll try and give him the max. I'm assuming the Ducks match it, but you never know. And I just came across Dylan Duke in free agency here, guys. He was actually on our team before. He's a Tampa Bay prospect, plays for Michigan. Two-way forward there with 95 passing. So if you can play on our fourth line, put up some assists, you know, be solid defensively. I don't mind getting him back on the team. Even if he's just in the AHL, should be a helpful player. All right, guys, so we got this defenseman here. I think had medium top four potential. Uh, winger there was like pretty solid as well for the AHL. Bender in a low top nine for a fifth round pick, essentially. Why would I do that? Seems like terrible value for me. Uh, Kusnadina here, I appreciate your interest, but he went with the Iowa Wild. That's okay. Cody Glass said yes, so our fourth line just got a lot better. Dylan Duke said yes, not sure where he'll be. Uh, Olison there went to Columbus Blue Jackets, so that's fine. Chase Stillman. Leno went with the Ducks. All the RFAs, you know, did go with their actual teams. Which makes sense. We're getting them two-way deals. There's pretty much no way their NHL team can't match that. Now, a new in here said yes. Okay, so that is huge. And look at this, guys. I was just looking through free agency. Obviously, we only have 1.1 million to spend. Owen Tippett here. 84 overall, only wants a million bucks. Are you kidding me? I mean, I'm going to give him, like, the max we can. We'll do 25k shy just to keep it easier. 1.1. If he says yes to that, like... Come on. That would just be such a steal. And I actually just found another one, guys. A little bit lower. Are you kidding me? Lassie Thompson here. 82 overall wants 875k. He's a UFA as well at 26. He immediately makes our bottom defensive pair better. Um, I'm going to offer 
I guess 950k. Yeah, okay. Three years will not work. If he says yes as well, like we just got so much better for so cheap. There you go. Owen Tibbet said yes. So I think our fourth line's now him, Cody Glass, and Razika. Lassie Thompson decided to join your team, but you don't have the cap space for my services. Crap. All right, guys. So I think the easiest way to make space is actually to trade Anuin, who I just signed. I was going to have BR backup, but he's making 1.2. So if we trade him, we should be able to save like 400k when the game calls up Colossal to be the new backup. Other than that, really, there's nothing I could think of. Somehow, too, he's got an insane amount of value, probably because of how good his contract is. We could potentially get back a second or third here from the Flyers, who are a seller. So this could be high picks. Looking around, it seems like a first-round pick was too much value, even if you're like trading with a buyer. So I feel like a second or third for a guy we just signed. Obviously, a little scummy, but it's a great deal for us. They say yes. Yeah, okay. So a high second, a high third. I mean, look at the picks we're going to have in next year's draft. Especially, too, if we can still get Lassie Thompson signed, we should have... Create a little bit of cap space there. Yeah, we have 1.2 million now. And he is still available, 850k. I mean, three years, we can't quite do. So yeah, I'll just make sure. I'll give him a million bucks for two years. Hopefully, like, the computers don't also try and outbid him. Again, our bottom D pair was 280s. We immediately make it better. Come on. And there we go. Okay, so that's awesome. And we're down the fall, guys. And as you can see, there's still a ton of 80 overall defensemen available. I'm going to make an offer right now on Vuko Jevic. Um, one year, 800k. I mean, we could do that. Let's do two years, 800k. This, just in case he plays well for us. As you can see here, kind of interesting stats, like really good skater there, 89 speed, excel, agility. Defense awareness there is low at 79, but 94 shot block, 90 stick check, five star physical, powerful shot. He could actually be like a decent player. And again, there's so many available. Looking at them all, I felt like he was just kind of the best one. Now, the one thing that kind of sucks, guys, I signed Lassie Thompson to be on our bottom D pair. And unfortunately, it doesn't matter who I pair with him, they're going to get a minus one chemistry. So at that point, Thompson's only playing like an 81, and the other guy's playing like a 79. I think it's better probably just to rock 280s who don't get a minus one. All right, guys, so now my line set for this year. I feel like this is our revenge season. Got to make up for that last year's first round exit. Now, I feel like we're definitely a contender. I mean, come on. Look at the top nine forwards here. All getting plus five chemistry. First line, no change. Caprizov, Bedard, Nylander, they did awesome last year. Hopefully they can do it again. Kamel, Colangelo, and Boldy here on the second line is also very solid. Again, Colangelo is only 85, but look at his shot there. It's solid. Five-star physical, good defense. He's slow, but he's also got decent hands. Basically, he's good at everything but skating, so hopefully you can just give the puck to Kamel and Boldy, who are both good skaters. Howard, Shen, Kurtz on the third line is also really good. Kurtz here was a rookie last year, 86 overall. Look at the shot, even the hands there as well. Good skater. He should be awesome there. And then fourth line, Cody Glass, Razika, Owen Tippett. I mean, come on. Such a stacked forward group. Defensively here, top four there gets plus five chemistry. Chikrin, Ekblad there on the top line, the two veterans. Cotton and Gontra, the two younger guys on the second pair. And then we got Vukajevic and Anderson here on the bottom pair. This reason I decided to go with them, as I mentioned, no chemistry loss as well. They both have five-star physical there. You can see that. So I feel like for a bomb D pair, hopefully them having five-star physical is a big help. In terms of the goaltending, no change. Vinny there, still 88 as our starter. Kolostov still 84 as the backup. In terms of the power play, I feel like it's the same power play we had last year. I mean, come on. That unit's so stacked. Even the, even the second unit there, I think, looks really good. Both formats here also solid. And again, game plus five on every single power play unit. PK-wise, get a plus five in the first. And we've actually got Connor Bedard on the first penalty kill, which might not be that bad. The dude's 96 overall. He's a plus five on every single line he's on. So that means he's always playing like 101 overall. I mean, look at his stats here. Like, aside from physical, the dude's basically a perfect player. So the more he's on the ice, I think the better for our team. Now you guys can see penalty kill two here. We've actually got Howard Colangelo. It's supposed to be Colangelo as the faceoff taker, but that's a bug right now. But where it doesn't keep the right guy as the centerman, you can see... Boldy there at center, post or Azika, so that's kind of annoying. Uh, three men penalty kill, one Shen, number two Colangelo, number three there Bedard. So again, I feel like the NHL team should be very, very solid this year. In terms of the AHL team, I mean, we got Gavin here as the first line center. He looks incredible, great shot on him, great hands. I think he makes the NHL team next year for sure. He's got Duke on his left wing, Makita there on the right wing. Second line there is also solid. You got Stenberg there as an 80. Uh, Tijiginla there, 77, getting better. Third line center, Raphael Steves, medium elite overall player, 73 overall. Hopefully he has a good season. Defensively here, Lettinen, who we just traded for, 79, a medium elite on the top pair with Muse. Muse here, 21, 79, a 94 passing. I mean, just amazing puck skills overall. I think he could even make the NHL team next year. Like, these two guys could be the new bottom pair. We've also got Lassie Thompson there. He's on the second pair, playing with Salo, Hancock, Edwards. Goaltending wise, Camesso's 84, Bedner's 81. Like, that team is stacked as well. And I just realized, guys, our captain here, Ty Ronnie, was actually scratched. He's on the third line now. I put Lorenz there on the fourth line. If you guys are curious, the other two alternates on this AHL team are Gavin here, of course, first line center, great player. 
and then Salah there, who's a veteran defenseman. In terms of NHL captaincy, guys, obviously losing Sorelli had to change it up. So Bedard still in an A, Shen, of course, still has the C, and I actually gave the other A to Gonchar. He's the dude we drafted in the 2022 Redrew draft, so our first ever draft pick. I think it's pretty cool with him now wearing a letter. Also, too, guys, before we get started with the sim here, you can see currently 3-4 and four in the preseason. Chikrin there actually averaging over a point per game. You like seeing that. We'll see if you can kind of continue that into the actual regular season. Team rating still 100 offense and 100 defense and 91 goal attending. So come on, this team's 100 overall rated again, essentially. They better make a run this year. And so after Christmas break here, guys, the really good record, 25, 10, and 1. Has us currently first in the division there with 51 points. Are we actually, oh no, Flyers there, 59, first in NHL. So you might be the starting goalie for the best team in the league right now. AHL, 21, 10, and 5. Very similar record. NHL is 25, 10, and 1. So yeah, that's interesting. Bedard there having an unreal year. He's got 52 and 36. Equal amount of goals and assists. AHL-wise, Stenberg actually. 30 and 36. They're second in the division. So hopefully both teams can keep it up here. All right, guys. I'm going to have the trade deadline here with a record of 39, 20, and 4. Continuing to crush it. 82 points on the year. The Blue Jackets there, though, have 83. The Maple Leafs leading the NHL with 84. Flyers, though, still close. 81. AHL-wise, 40, 15, and 8. They gotta be, yeah, they're first in the NHL. Actually tied with the checkers, geez. There's always like one or two other really good AHL teams. But Darn's got 87 points, 63 games. Love seeing that. In the AHL there, Gavin, 56 and 63. So both teams are looking good. Definitely at the deadline here. We're a buyer. Um, we'll see what moves we can make. Last year we didn't make a single trade. Um, this year, I feel like the forwards are fine. Obviously could improve that bottom D pair. Maybe could also, you know, improve second line center. If we can find the right trade, bring in like a real all-star. Dubois, for instance, would not be too bad. 89 overall, making 6.5 for the next two years. Uh, Polak there, you probably don't need. Darlene, I wouldn't mind, but that's a lot of value for one year left, and I don't think we can afford him. Caulfield, Skarov there. Goddard, not signed, so we actually can't even use him. Josh Doan, Dylan Cousins, one year left at 7.7. .7. Interesting. He might actually be better to trade for than Dubois, based on trade value. Um, after him, Clayton Keller, Devin Taze, okay. And I was curious about Vinny's stats this season, guys. He's playing a lot better. 0.912 save percentage, 2.81 goals against. Um, also, too, in regards to like a trade there for Cousins or Dubois, obviously the guy going to be moving is Colangelo, the current second line center. He's actually got 45 points, though, 25 goals. Like, that's really solid. Shen here down to 82 now, making 6.5, only 22 points. I mean, the captain will definitely bring him back next year, but at a much, much cheaper price. Now, Cousins here, he's got 30 points on the year. Are we really going to trade a guy making less money who's younger for a guy putting up less points? Like, that is tough. Obviously, he is higher rated, but I don't know if it makes sense. Same with Dubois. Dubois's got the exact same amount of points. Maybe he's higher rated. Some X factors there. Power forward. Really good defensively. Good physical. It's good a good shot, too. Dubois trade could make sense. We don't have to pay a lot because I think Dubois could do even better than him on that second line. Playing with Boldy and Kamel. Where Cousins, I'm not sure. Plus Cousins. We could end up losing if he asked for a ton more money next year. All right, guys, so the trade line is now complete. And for the second year in a row, I did not make a trade. I was looking around, and again, it just didn't make sense. Like, the centers that were on the block really weren't producing much more than our guys. So I felt like that was the only really spot we could need an improvement. I think the rest of our forward depth's fine. Defensive depth's fine. Goalies are doing well. So I didn't find any, like, profits on the block for cheap. So I decided to just keep status quo. If it's not broke, don't fix it. Looking at the trades that did happen, though, uh, fair very there to the Pittsburgh Penguins from Washington, Jordan Green to the Capitals, Valeno to the Golden Knights, Tolvin in there to the Red Wings, let's see, Adam Lowry there to the Hurricanes, Yolen in the Bruins, Dostal the Avalanche, Ram Pitlick there to the Bruins, Martin Cott to the National Predators, they also got Barrett Hayton there from the Coyotes, Cash to the Minnesota Wild, Philip Deneau there to the Lightning, you got Victor Arvidsson there going to the Ducks, Patrick Kane to the Sharks. Wow, that was the first trade of the day. Now, that's a blockbuster, although he is going to be older at this point, so probably not as high rated, but still a blockbuster nonetheless. Obviously, no trade. The line's going to stay the same. We'll see in the next month and a half here and see where this team ends up. All right, guys, I'm wrapping the season here with a record of 53, 25, and 4. So we finished with 110 points on the year. Unfortunately, those Maple Leafs are just too good in the regular season. 114 points. They're winning the President's Trophy. AHL team here, 52, 20, and 9. Finished with 113 points which is actually good for second there by the San Jose Barracuda. Checkers there actually tied us as well at 113. So again, really good teams are in the AHL. Gavin there leading score with 72 points in 81 games. But Dart had 103 on the year, which is awesome to see. So we'll take a look here and see what the rest of the team did. Hopefully that first line, him, Nylander, Kaprizov went off and it did. Kaprizov 99 points, one shot of 100, kind of sucks. Nylander there at 95. Calandolo, 64. So not too bad at all. After he moved up from fourth line left wing last season to second line center this year. Kamel, 63. Howard, 62. Chicken 48. I mean, Matt Bully there, 45 points. 
18 minutes of ice time, 88 overall, making seven and a half million. I'd like to see him at least have 50. Come on, Kurtz there, 46. Ekblad, 42 is not bad. Shen, 37. Again, for dropping the rating, we can take that. Um, take a look here and see our goalies did. So Vinny, a 908 save percentage, 2.92 goals against. Kolosov there actually had better numbers again. For whatever reason, it seems like that's always the case with the backups. AHL wise, Kamaso, 0.922 and a 2.28. AHL skaters here. Uh, Stenberg, 69, nice. Matica there, 64. Bolshinov, 60. So four guys, 60 plus. Duke and Blake there, 52. Ronnie and Aginla both had 41. And now take a look at the entire league. Austin Matthews, 142 points. Are you kidding me? Panarin 129 and Marner 127. If you guys ever do a Leafs franchise, get your hands on Panarin somehow because that seems to be the ultimate trio. Look at the plus minus. 50 plus. Cal Connor 109 with minus 1. Bedard there 103 at plus 52. So he still had a really good year, but I mean, how do we compete with that top Maple Leafs line? And you can see Kaprizov and Neilan were right behind him there. So I mean, you got the Leafs line 1, 2, 3. Connor on his own at 4. And then you got our top line there 5, 6, and 7, which is pretty cool. Matthew, 73 goals. Yeah, no one even had 50 behind him. Like, geez. Defensively here, Barry, 79. I mean, it's an, he's 80 overall. What? 80 overall AHL potential. Still has really good puck skills and shooting. 94 offensive awareness, good skater. Just his defensive stats and physical have gone way down. 80 overall, he put up 79 points. That just shows you the rating does not matter if they have the right stats in the right places. That is insane. Goal tending, Anderson there again with the most wins. Vinny wasn't too far behind there, 38. Uh, looks like Anderson as well, best save percentage for a starter, 0.925. He's also got the lowest goals against there, 2.32. Rookie skaters here, most points. Kuzadinov there, 58, who we actually tried to sign, of course, the wild matched. I'm trying to think, do we have a good rookie this year? I don't think so. Yeah, no one's popping up. So I'll take a look at the standings, guys, again. Second in the NHL behind the Maple Leafs. They're just too good in the regular season, 114. We had 110. You got five teams there with 100 plus points. Take a look. Okay, so Pittsburgh, they're going to get in at the 18 spot. Last in the NHL is the Buffalo Sabres with 73 points. Goals for the Maple Leafs were first. We were third there. Goals against. Worst team in the Winnipeg Jets. Maple Leafs were the best team. 200. Almost in the 100s. One goal away. Uh, we had the fifth best goals against, though. So, like, our team is good. The Maple Leafs there are just insane. So, First round of playoffs, guys, it actually looks like we're probably going to be playing the Carta Avalanche, although I think some teams still have a game left to play. And no, okay, sorry, we're playing the LA Kings, who took the Avalanche playoff spot. They actually didn't even get in. Now, before we take a look at the Kings lines, I do want to see the Maple Leafs lines. Like, this team has won the President's Trophy five straight years now. So, of course, that big first line. How long has Panarin been on their team now? Um, two years, okay. So, I mean, before that, they're still getting it done without him. Giroux, 80 overall, second line with Robertson. Ovechkinov here, 79 overall. How do you do on the second line? 35 points. So yeah, literally that first line just carrying. Sammy Blaise is 79. Mikhaev back on the team, which is kind of funny. Andreas Janssen also back on the team. Okay. Defensively here, Riley, Nimala, Liljegren, Sandin, Stillman, Roy. I mean, their team's mostly the defense are already there. Anderson back on the team, 80 backup. So like I was saying, I think this first line is just absolutely carrying. Obviously, the three years before Panarin was on the team, they had Nylander for, I think, two of them. And I guess the other year, they just kind of got luckier. Maybe Matthews Marner alone were enough. Now, look at the LA Kings here. They got Kaliev on that first line with Hurkot, Fiala. Schwartz on the second line with Byfield and Mangiapane. They got this Louis Bouchard guy, 83 overall. And we just drafted first overall, 2027. Anderson Dolan there, 88. Very solid third line center. Uh, Pinelli 85 on the fourth line. I mean, yeah, they got depth for sure. We definitely have more high-end offensive talent, though. Defensively, they got Brant Clark, and that's about it. Everyone else is, like, decent, but no one else above 84. Goaltending, Huso 84, Peterson 83. So a decent tandem, but nothing crazy. Definitely a good enough team that they can beat us. Um, I like our team better on paper, but we'll see what happens here, guys, in the playoffs. First two games in L.A., 3-2 OT win, 4-3 OT win, so two very close games. Or sorry, those were home. Now we head to LA, and we complete the sweep there in LA, actually winning both those games in regulation. In the second round here, who are we going to be up against? Hopefully uh, we get a good matchup. The Nashville Predators. Okay, so we got to take a look at those lines. And look at this, guys. Over in the Eastern Conference, the Maple Leafs are already out of the playoffs. They got knocked out in round one. Like I said, I don't know what's going on for them. Isaac Howard there, seven points, four games for us round one. Love seeing that. And now take a look here, guys, at the National Predators. They got Forsberg still on the team, first line, playing with this Adam Bennett guy. Let's see. Fifth overall, 2025, Oliver Bjorkstrand, Tomasino, Zachary Leheru, Carl Sterner, fifth overall, 2024. Dad McKenna's on their team now. I forgot about that. Pajot, they're still at 85 overall at 35. Evangelista's up to an 87. 
caught there playing with Hayton and Carlson. So yeah, this team, talk about depth. Their fourth line, 85, 85, 83. Just as much depth as LA, if not more. But again, someone in LA doesn't really have the high-end offensive players we have. Yossi on the team still plays 80 overall. How do you do as an 80? I uh, still put up 30 points this year, which isn't bad. This Tychonic guy, 85, Fabro 85, a 79 Fedorov, 80, 84. So again, a very similar makeup, but they're goaltending. What are they doing? Askarov, Saros, both 89s. How much are they paying these guys? 7.6, 4.2. Askarov needs a raise. I assume one of the two will be traded this summer because how can you afford to keep both those goalies? So again, similar team to LA, but with better goaltending. Don't really see this one being a sweep, but you never know. First two games, of course, in Saskatoon. Win the game one, lost game two. Head to Smashville now. Game three is an OT loss. Game four is a win. So series is tied to a piece, headed home, and we get a loss. Okay, so we have to win the next two games straight here. Keep our playoff hopes alive. We're up two. Kaprizov, Vukajevic. Two to one. There we go. Six two. That was a huge a third period. Colangelo, Bedard, Kurtz, and Shen for us. Forsberg for them. All right. Hopefully we can keep that momentum going here into game seven. Head home to Saskatoon again. Do or die. Have to win this game. If we do, we'll be playing either the Canucks or the Oilers in the Western Conference Final. We're up one early. Bedard. Two to one. Anderson for us. Evangelista for them. Three to two. We hold on. Colangelo with the game winner. That's why I did not trade him with the deadline. The dude's playing too well. So here we go, guys. It looks like we're actually playing the Edmonton Oilers in the Western Conference Final. Of course, McDavid and Dreisaitl are going to be on that team. Nylander, 14 points in 11 games. So love seeing that. And I'll take a look here at the Oilers roster. They got Dreisaitl on the first line with McDavid, as well as Yamamoto's in 89. Second line's Hyman, Nuge, Campe. They got Marchment there on the third line with Goudreau and Radish. Borgo, McLeod, Holloway. So they've also got some depth. And of course, that first line, I mean, come on. That's the duo, 95, 97, respectively. Defensively here, Lindell, Bouchard's a solid top pair. Carlo, Nurse, Dermott, and Strabak. I mean, that's not bad defense. 86, Skinner. This is a good team. This is a good team for sure. Di a little bit different of a makeup just because, you know, McDavid, Dreisel, going to command so much cap space. Their defense isn't as good as ours. Like, our top 4D has to be the best top 4D in the league. But um, apart from that, pretty similar. And of course, in game one here, guys, I am curious to see their ratings. Pretty easy to compare since we have 100-100. And then 91 goal tiny, as you can see right there. They've got 98, 91, 84. So yeah, they are two worse, nine worse, and seven worse in terms of the three different ratings, which means we're the better team on paper for sure. We're gonna see whether or not that matters. And look at this, what the heck? The first two games are in Edmonton. We won the Western Conference. This happened before actually um, with a custom league. Like what's going on? Kaprizov, Nylander there, first two goals. Hyman for them, three to one now, Cody Glass. And there we go. So we win our first game in Edmonton, who shouldn't even have the home ice advantage. That's so annoying. Next year, guys, game two in Edmonton again. Down two to one here. Colangelo for us. Dreisel to Hyman for them. Three to one, not looking good. Nuge gets a goal. All right, so still 47 shots, I think I just saw, to 29. I mean, we definitely, you know, we're putting the pressure on them. Skinner's had a big game. Honestly, though, one and one through the conference final, first two games. I will take it. Head home now to Saskatoon. Not a very uh, far flight at all. One nothing early lead. Ekblad there. Two to one. Ekblad again. Nuge for them. Six to two. I was hoping Ekblad could have added another for the Hattie. But it's Chikrin, Bedard, Nylander, Shen, Dreisaitl for them. That's a huge win there. I think we almost doubled their shots. It was like 44 to 24. If we can win this next game at home, we get a 3-1 series lead. That would be huge. So here we go, guys. Next game, 1-1. Kalanchalo, he's been playing great in the playoffs. McDavid for them. 2-2. Two two. Kaprizov, Dreisaitl. And we hold on. Kurtz there. The, I was about to say rookie, but it's his second year. With the game winner on the power play against Stuart Skinner. So we now have a 3-1 series lead. I saw the Devils in the East were actually up 3-0 on the Sens. They're up 3-1 now, though. Here we go, guys. Just have to win one of these next three games to make it to the Stanley Cup Final for the first time. And we're up one early. Kaprizov, 2-0 Nylander, 5-0 win. Gontrar, Colangelo, and Chikrin. That's what I'm talking about. Let's go. Hopefully now we can have some luck in the Stanley Cup Final. I swear if we made it all this far for nothing. Let's see who we're going to be playing. It looks like the centers are actually kind of making a comeback but not enough. The Devils there is who we're matched up with. And in terms of the AHL team, we actually got knocked out in the third round by the Wilkes-Barre Scranton Penguins. Lost them in five after beating Lavelle in the second round and Cleveland Monsters there in the first. I feel like we played Cleveland almost every single year in the first round. And Ty Ryan there actually led our AHL team in playoffs scoring 15.17 games. Currently in the NHL, it's Nylander there with 20 and 16. Okay, we'll see if we can keep it up in the Stanley Cup final. If not, maybe like Bedard will step up, win us the Stanley Cup. So Devils here guys, first line, Brat, Hughes, and Holtz. I mean, that's sick. 
Shrangovich there, 87 now. Playing with Jaeger, Varane on the second. Donato there on the third line. His year, Gallagher. If you guys forget, we actually had Varane on our team the first couple years. Uh, Pastilla there with Mercer and LeBanc on the fourth line. Defensively, Nemich and Hughes. Hamilton, Siegenthaler. Norlander and Mukamal Dean. I mean, that's a solid defense. Goalies got Blackwoods in 86. Okay, so again, I think our team's better on paper. We have a bit more high end talent. The fact they have a 90 history, though, third line center is insane. Uh, defensively, theirs is good, but ours is better. Again, I don't really think any team can compete with our top 4D. So we'll see how this team matches up to us. They got three less offense, seven less defense, and seven worse goaltending. So again, we're the best team on paper. I feel like we're probably the best team on paper in terms of the entire league. Like, I don't even think the Maple Leafs would have better ratings than us. They just have the most ridiculous first line ever. But here we go, guys. We actually have our home ice advantage again against the Devils. Let's go. Game one. We're down one. LeBanc there early. We're up three to two. What a second. Capri's up with a couple. Chicken with one. Hamilton for them. Are you kidding me? Gallagher, Shrangovich there with the game winner. They come back and win the first game there in the third period. I thought we had that one. We can't go down two nothing. We gotta at least take one of these games before we head to Newark. Here we go. 1-1. One, one. Shannon Gallagher, the two vets. Nothing in the second row. Shooting them 27-18. We're head to OT now. There we go. Isaac Howard with the OT winner. We needed that one. And here we go, guys. Game three is in New Jersey. They're up one. Dawson Mercer. Still one nothing. Anybody's game. Equal shots. Wow. Blackwood gets a shutout. Making 38 saves. And our team cannot find a goal. That's not good. Both teams have actually only scored two goals through the last two games, which is kind of crazy. So the goalies are putting on a show. Game four, we need this one. Up one early. Ekblad. Two to one. Kurtz for us. Pistula for them. Are you kidding me? Another third period comeback. Mercer and Holtz. We have to lock it down the third. Like, we cannot be blowing these leads. So, guys, backs against the wall. 3-1 series lead for the Devils. We're not out of it yet, though. Game 5 here is at home. Come on, we gotta start something. We're down too early. Shrangovich and Holtz. 3-1. That might be all she wrote. I'll resume simulation, but I think it's gonna be too little too late. They're actually outshooting us here as well. We usually outshoot them, and it still doesn't matter. We needed one on the power play there. Sim period. And yeah, we cannot find a goal in the third. The New Jersey Devils are your Stanley Cup champs. I can't believe that. I mean, we can't be too upset, I guess. We made it to the Stanley Cup final. We still got four seasons left to try and win our first cup. Hopefully, it's a sign of good things to come. And there you have it, guys. Playoffs are complete. The Devils there won the cup, and the San Jose Barracuda won the Calder Cup. And I believe they also won the AHL regular season. And look at this. Seattle there jumping from 7-1 to one to the first overall pick in 2028. We'll take a look at the awards next here, guys. Nylander, 23 points in 21 playoff games. Definitely cannot put this on him. We'll see how everyone else did. Kaprizov, 21 was a point per game. Howard, almost a point per game. Colangelo, 17 with nine goals. Two game winners. Bedard, 17. I mean, he was over a point per game in the regular season, so I'm not sure why he slowed down. Ekblad went off. Chikrin was okay. Kamel and Kurtz, not the best, but also not terrible. Boldy, only 10 points. I'm not sure why Boldy's not performing better for us. Vinny here, 0.925, 2.27. I mean, yeah, like that's what you want to see from him, and he played well there in the playoffs. Looking at the playoff tree now, the Devils beat the Blue Jackets in six, Flyers in five, Sanders in seven. So yeah, the Sanders made a series, almost came back, and then they beat us in five there again. Cannot believe the Sanders beating the Leafs in six in round one. That's so funny. Look at the awards now, of course. Stanley Cup goes to the Devils. Like I was saying, look at that. Five straight presence trophies for the Maple Leafs. Um, Francis Campbell, we get our first one there, which is pretty cool. Devils get their first Prince of Wales as well in a while. Matthews, Art Ross as well, the Hart. Riley, James Norris, Panarin, Lady Bing. It's just all Leafs. Kostandinov there with the Calder. Luke Hughes, Con Smythe. Anderson, another Vesna trophy. As well, I got another William Jennings. Matter there, Bill Masterton with the Sens. LA coach, Jack Adams. Beneers, Selkie trophy. Matthews, Ted Lindsay. And of course, he also got the Maurice Richard. Now, looking at the HL trophies, I don't think... Or actually, sorry, we did win the regular season for the Eastern Conference. As San Jose Barracuda there in the West, who of course won the regular season as well. We, we too won our division. Individual awards, Stange here, back-to-back -back most points, back-to-back -back MVP. Uh, Perot, though, most goals. Josephson, best rookie. Kakinen, best goalie. Tracy, sportsmanship. McGinn there, community involvement. And then Kakinen, also lowest goals against. And next year, guys, we'll take a look at the retired players here before we end the video. Crosby calls it quits. 40 years old, right on. Play with the Toronto Marlies this year, the 72 overall. He put up almost a point per game. I mean, pretty cool to see. I feel like I'd rather him retire before he, you know, drops the AHL. Patty Kane there on the Sharks. How did he do this year? 72 points. Retires at 84 overall. That's kind of nuts. He had 14 points in the playoffs. Malkin there retires with Sid. Went to the Flyers, the rival team. Blake Wheeler, John Tavares, Forachek there, Duchesne, Oshie, Perron. 
uh, Vander Kane, Josh Bailey, Tori Krug. I mean, look at the names. Gallagher, Hyman. I like, geez, so many big names retiring this year. In terms of the goaltending, Bobrovsky, Jonathan Quick, Varlamov, Bernier, Ranta, DeSmith. So, a pretty big year for retirement class, obviously, with Sidney Crosby. But that's going to do it, guys, for this episode. Hopefully next year, you know, the team can build in a Stanley Cup final appearance and actually win our first Stanley Cup. But until then, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, leave that thumbs up. If you guys have not subscribed yet, hit the sub button down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.